What's up, YouTube? Jacob Graham here for Unix Soldier. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. How you doing? <laughs> Today we're going to talk to you guys about why Android is so much better than iPhone. And why Android's better than Windows Mobile, and why Android's just the best. Um, the reason I'm doing this video is because I got the idea that maybe people think I don't like Android. Um, no, I just don't want people to think I'm biased. I'm not a fanboy. Um, the things I like change all the time, depending on what's better. And what's better is always relative. You've got to remember that. So, what do I like about Android? Well, let's just start with the hardware. Okay. So, on top of with with iPhone, I can't always really tell directly without doing some serious calculations and doing my homework exactly how much powerfuler an Android phone is than an iPhone. And you know, you can see all these little tests that people do, but they don't really matter because you have different resolutions that need to be rendered, and you have different circumstances that don't really make sense to compare by what phone's faster. So when it comes to just talking about hardware here, it's really hard to figure out if the iPhone is faster because they don't really explain it that well and because the chip is included with the actual video processor. So it's kind of like an APU or something. Um, so basically I think that's one major reason why, for me anyway, iPhone um, I don't like it because I can't really compare it with other with other phones hardware like this one is uh, HTC one s. It's the last model that came out. It's a very thin phone 1.5 gigahertz um, Dual core and I can tell you that and I can tell you it's got a gig of RAM. I can tell you all that stuff 16 gigabyte SD card so You know I can't do that really with an iPhone and that that's one thing that bugs me is they're kind of hiding it and just make you know using crappier hardware um, spec wise. Uh, then we talk about uh, reliability of the hardware. It's not good at all. Um, an iPhone is meant to break. I say this all the time. Uh, people think plastic versus metal. Duh, plastic's weaker. Right, but in actual drop tests, and the recent ones actually show that iPhone has done better than whatever Android they've used. But from my experience, Android has always been a better made phone. Let me explain why it's better than aluminum. With aluminum, your phone when you drop it and it's glass on, on both sides, or if it's aluminum, it's going to break on both sides. You have more chance of your phone looking like crap if you drop it. If you drop it on the back, an Android on the back, the worst you can worry about is the camera breaking. If you drop an iPhone on the back, um, you know, you're going to smash all the glass. And some of them have aluminum backing. And that's great. But the thing that sucks to me about iPhone is that rigid construction, when it falls, it's going not to bounce, it's going to take all the weight and all the impact on that one point that it drops on, wherever that may be. So that's the reason I don't like it. I find having a flexible phone, a more flexible phone, like, an, like a, a Samsung or something, this one's not flexible at all. It's actually quite the opposite of what I'm trying to explain here. And it's not a good example. But most phone shell casings are kind of like this, which is my case for my phone. Um, but this has been to it. Right? And I don't know if you've ever heard somebody, you know, you can twist a little bit. I don't know if you've ever heard somebody tell you that certain people have lived after falling out of a plane. Most of those people live because not just of where they fall, but what happens before they fall. And they pass, what, is, what happens is they pass out. And why this matters is if you pass out, your body becomes completely loose and limber. When you're falling and you're thinking about falling, you're going to be like this, oh my god, I'm going to fall, right? And then boom, you're going to hit and all your bones are going to just break. But if you pass out from falling, when you hit the ground, you have much more chance that you might bounce and survive. And so the phone is the same way, except your phone doesn't pass out. <laughs> but you might drop your phone and it bounces instead of all the, the force being on that one spot. And that's why I think people have got that wrong, thinking that an iPhone's better just because it's more rigid. That doesn't, that's not true. Cars, you see that in cars too. Cars, when you, you know, they make them these days, they used to be like tanks. And people, you know, when they'd hit something, they'd fly through the front window. There goes your baby in this car seat. So nowadays, cars crumple up on the front end. So the whole front end crumples up like a piece of crap. And the reason it does that is to protect it from damage. And that is why I think that having a softer phone design is better. Now, like I said, this phone totally is not a good example. Um, I got this phone for $170, and at the time it was worth $600, so I unlocked it and everything was great for me and modded it. But 
Uh, I think Samsung's a little bit better, and this phone's completely rigid. It's like a metal carbon um, backing, and because of that, I'm really worried it's going to break all the time. I've seen this phone completely destroyed already. Um, also, uh, the camera pretty much is exposed. It's actually um, it's actually um, high profile, has a high profile off of the, the phone, so if I drop it, the camera's going to take a, an impact, so that's why I always got it in this case. But another reason I think this phone is really like an iPhone, well, I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. Let me just get back to why iPhones suck, and this phone has a lot of features of why I'm about to tell you um, Androids are better than iPhones. This one isn't a very good example of what I'm trying to say. But the reason why I think Androids are better than iPhones is because most Androids have additional storage, um, like an iPhone doesn't. So if you have an extra size uh, storage you want to add to your Android, uh, you can do that. You can have 32, 64 gig gigabit uh, SD cards and add it to your phone that already has 16 or 8 gigs or whatever it has for internal storage. And you can't do that with, with iPhone. Uh, you might be able to one day, but as far as I'm concerned, you can't right now. Um, also, the other thing is, if the battery dies in this phone, I have to take the phone completely apart. Um, I mean, this phone I do. And I was actually talking about an iPhone, though. So with an iPhone, if the battery dies, you have to take it to someone who knows what they're doing, and it, they're really tough to take apart. You actually have, in an iPhone, let's pretend this is an iPhone, you have 16 little washers that go on each of the screws that go all around the frame. And you have to get all the washers on and the frame. And the way you actually have to do it is you have to take a screwdriver like this one, okay? And you have to put it in like this. So you're, you're working on it because I've worked on tons of iPhones. And you have to turn it like this. And it's really hard and you need a special kind of screwdriver and it's nearly impossible. You need certain machinery to do it, which I had. Um, that is why I don't like iPhone 2 is because they're so hard, like Apple, all Apple products, to take apart. So you need a real specialist to take them apart. A normal PC tech can't do it. Um, so when you open them, they're meant to kind of break. And iPhones are literally meant to break, in my opinion, because they have glass on both ends. Uh, they're not made out of very strong material. So the thing I don't like about um, iPhone as well is that you can't take out the battery. If the battery were to die, you can't change it. If you know, if you wanted ever to change it, you'd have to take it to a professional to completely undo it, which would cost you just two hundred dollars. So I charge customers just to open their iPhone and put it back together properly. And so that's where I really have a hard time thinking that you know iPhone is better than, than this one. Um, but that's all gone out the window with this phone. This phone has no removable battery, no SD card. That's why I said it, it's not a very good example. But most Android phones, like the Samsung Galaxy S1, the S2, the S3, uh, now the S4, and also the Note and the Note 2, they all have removable storage and removable batteries, which is huge. Because, you know, who wants to pay an extra $200 plus the cost of the battery to replace their battery in their phone when it dies? Not cool. And, you know, now Apple's coming out with, uh, this is so ridiculous that customers believe this, the idea that you're going to somehow benefit from having RAM soldered in, like it's going to help with air cooling and, you know, stuff like that. That's just r ridiculous. They just want you to update your, your, com your computer. That's why they do that. They want you to have to update it. They don't want you to be able to, um, you know, replace something in it. They want the whole thing to be rebought again. And I think that's crap. I think that's a bad business model and it's very evident to anybody who has a brain and thinks. So that's why I think um, that Android's a lot better is because the removable battery, the removable storage, the fact that you can see exactly what the hardware is, and people, you can understand it in layman terms, you don't have to do a calculation to figure out, okay, how strong is the, the graphics compared to the CPU because this is an APU, like with the A5 and the A6 chip. Um, so <clears throat> APU might be the wrong word, but anyway, um, it's just what I call them uh, because most APUs, CPUs, they use the, the processor as far as I'm concerned for GPU. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know. I'm um, getting up into 10 minutes here, but that I just have so many reasons. Um, also, if, <clears throat> if I wanted a phone that had such a small screen as the iPhone, you know, like, I think I would probably go for one of those watch phones or something like that, or those watch computers, because I just don't get like having something smaller than four or five inches um, for a screen. I also don't like with iPhone how there's not a lot of choice. So when you're getting an iPhone, you know, 
you've only really got one or two that you can pick from, you know, the last gen and the first gen of the only iPhone. And it's the same thing with their tablets. Now, tablets is another story. I won't get into that because I actually like the iPad. Um, I don't have one, but I'll tell you why I like it in another video. Okay? Thanks. Please tell me what you guys think about this video. Please rate and subscribe if you like it. Cheers.